In this video, we'll show you how to get up and running with TCP Replay very quickly. First of all, what we'll do is we'll just download a PCAP file off of the website. If you want to find out where everything is, go to our wiki, TCP Replay, appnetta.com. So, right now we have the file in place. What we do next is go capture our source code. Now we suggest that you get things from source code whenever you can if you want the latest version. In this case it's version 4.0.0. It's the first version that supplies uh, flow information and gives you the ability to test at very high speeds and at wire rates. Next what we do is we extract the file that we have. Let's just have a look at where we are. We're going to change into the TCP replay folder and as with most auto tools programs, what you do is you run dot configure and we're going to run make and if everything works, one thing we recommend doing don't have to do this, is optional, but do a test just to make sure that everything is working well. This will take a test.pcat file that came in with the source code and we'll try manipulating it many different ways and sending it out and doing some binary checks just to make sure that all the data is correct. There's no corruption and the platform that you built this on works properly. I'll let that finish off and install. Once again, you must be super user mode, so we use a sudo command, make install, and it's able to run everything into the system. So to test, we'll go back to the home directory, list to see our files, and there are several different programs that are related to TCP replay. There's about seven of them. TCP replay itself is the most common one. We'll check the version number, make sure everything was compiled properly, that we have the right version of code, and I think we're all set to go. So, if you're replaying an existing PCAP file, then you will have to be in sudo mode. We'll do TCP replay, and uh, we'll select an interface. The one that we're going to do is ETH7, which is a interface that is 10 gig E on this machine. Now the dash T option will make sure that we replay this at full speed. If we don't use a dash T option, it will play back at the speed that the file was recorded at, which is about five minutes. We don't want to wait five minutes. We want it to go faster than that, so we use dash T. Now to make things even faster, I'm going to use a dash K. It will preload the PCAP file into memory. You must have enough memory on the system to preload the file. And so finally what you do is you get the PCAP file or a list of PCAP files that you would like to play. And very simply we've made things work about 7.8 gigabits per second. Not so great. It's not going full wire speed but it's pretty good. And uh, we have made about 127 flows per second. One other option we'll do here is let's try running with the loop command and let's run this about uh, 500 times. So now what we're doing is we're playing this back instead of being done in just a very short period of time. We ran it for four seconds by looping uh, 500 times. Brought our rate up significantly. We got up to about nine gigabits per second. Our flows per second went way down. Why would that be? Well, we're just playing the same file over and over again and the IP addresses are not changing whatsoever. So let's add one more option. This is a new option with version 4. It's a very quick way of changing IP addresses without all the expense of doing CRC checks. So we can get close to the speed of wire speed that we have uh, without losing much speed at all we can actually get unique IP addresses for every single time that we look through the address and uh, through uh, the PCAP file and we look at the flows per second. We're now at 145,000 flows per second. This is probably good enough to test most devices, uh, flow devices, 
In the next video, we'll show you how to take this all the way up to wire speed and to get the maximum amount of speed out that you can for this PCAP file.